Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the shooting show, and welcome to today's program. Whether you're a regular viewer or someone new, we're so glad to have you. We have a great show for you. We have some features I think you're really going to find interesting. And let me tell you what, friends, we have some of these congressmen on the run. And we have you, our viewing audience, to thank for it because we've been asking you to call and to write and to fax some of these congressmen, some of these senators, and yes, it is making a difference. You see, we've been telling you the whole time we didn't have to have literally 50 million or 100 million people to do this to get some things done. It only takes a group of dedicated people who are doing the right thing. And doggone it, yes, we can stand up and we can get some things done. However, the fight is not over, but we do have, uh, we certainly have some advantage in talking to some of these people. A lot of these congressmen are really getting angry and tired of hearing from gun owners. Well, you know what, friends? We need to make them madder and tireder. We cannot let up because this thing with this crime bill is not over with. Uh, earlier today, I heard on the network news that, uh, that President Clinton was 10 or 15 votes short in being able to pass this crime bill. Well, we need to get on our representatives. We need to call our senators and tell them, look, we don't want this crime bill. It's absolutely outrageous. One, it's a pork barrel fiasco. Uh, the administration is paying back some of these urban areas, apparently, for uh, this package he did not get passed last year. And plus, it takes guns out of the hands of responsible citizens. Well, you know, friends, if a government were halfway honest, it would want its responsible citizens armed. So the responsible citizens could help keep order and certainly could take care of themselves. So this is where we are, friends. We have got to keep up this fight. Well, let's go ahead and open another shooting show. Yes, we have some more volunteer watermelons. And let's see what happens when a watermelon meets number four buckshot. Well, <laughs> let's clean up the deal there. Well, friends, we're going to look at some, uh, shall we say, smaller handguns. Uh, today we have a little Beretta 22 short, and this is the model 950 uh, BS. It has the tip-up barrel. We're also going to look at another small gun, about the same size as the Beretta, and this is made by Advantage Arms in St. Paul, Minnesota. And honestly, I, this is the first one of these little guns I've ever seen. This is a four-barrel uh, 22 Magnum. And uh, again, this is the first one I have ever uh, really seen to handle. A good friend of ours uh, has loaned us this gun for testing on the program today. And it's certainly a unique concept. And we're going to look at one other uh, briefly. This is the Bryco uh, 380. It says Bryco Arms, I believe, Irvine, California. It's the Jennings uh, 380. I guess that's what it is, a model 48, 380 automatic. And this is really a nicely done, it's a nice looking little 380 uh, semi-automatic handgun. It has oh, hole seven or eight in the magazine, and this is a very inexpensive gun. Now that's one of the things that we get a lot of questions, uh, a good number of letters and some phone calls about among the inexpensive guns, and yes, you can probably see perspiration. Well, heck, I don't perspire, I sweat. <laughs> Run it off my glasses here, because I think our we had a cool front come through. I think it's down to about 103 here. So uh, anyway, you're a faithful reporter out here in the sun doing, doing my duty here. Anyway, uh, this is really not a bad little gun. I honestly do not know how durable uh, these little guns retail. I believe for under $200 uh, in a lot of locations, and that price may be subject to vary. Uh, it's known as an inexpensive uh, small handgun. It's not real small, in fact. It's smaller than our government model 45 in comparing the two quite a bit. But uh, it's a looks to be a nicely made little gun. Uh, like I said, I don't know how reliable or how functional the few times we shot it. Well, it has performed real well. Uh, the good folks at Britain's have loaned us this gun for testing, and uh, a lot of these guns are out there because someone will go down to a gun shop and they'll see maybe a Colt or a Wesson or a Smith & Wesson or a Ruger revolver or some of the automatics for, or semi-automatics for, say, anywhere from 350 or $400 up to six or $700, and they say, wait a minute, you know, that's just more money than I can afford. So then they began to look, they say, well, do you have something that's cheaper? 
and the little uh, Jennings or Brico or I don't really know what I'm supposed to call it. It's Brico Arms. It's the Jennings automatic here, semi-automatic 380. Uh, this would be one that a lot of people would look at. Now, you know me. I am not for the new shooter uh, owning or getting a semi-automatic as their first gun simply because the semi-automatics take a little more work. They take a little more dedication to learning to shoot the gun properly. A lot of time needs to be spent on semi-automatics clearing malfunctions or clearing jams. Or these guns are much more likely uh, to have a malfunction, say, than a comparably priced small revolver. And some of the revolvers that would be in this price range would be something like a Rossi, uh, the lesser expensive, uh, maybe some of the Tauruses, they'd probably be a little more than that. But uh, uh, Charter Arms or Charco makes some inexpensive small revolvers. And really, for the new shooter, I would certainly recommend a small revolver simply unless you're willing to go out here and learn to use this gun. You've got to learn how it functions. And really, those are, are if, if you want a semi-automatic after you, uh, if you really do know how they operate, well, that's okay. And certainly, it's your choice. I'm not going to be like the government. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't have. But that's certainly our recommendation here on the program. Be that as it may, this little Jennings 380 uh, looks to be very functional. It comes with a spare magazine. And uh, uh, really, it's not a, little, a, a bad little gun. Now then, friends, let's take the little guns we're looking at here in order. Here's the Beretta 950, and you can see it does shoot the 22 short cartridge, and uh, it goes in the magazine. I believe it holds six in the magazine. Of course, the way you load the little gun, you'll tip up the barrel like so, and yes, we already have one loaded. And the short cartridge is uh, somewhat of a misunderstood cartridge. Actually, the velocities with the short are not far behind a long rifle. It's just a lighter bullet. Now, for someone who could not possibly, due to a lady having fingernails or something, she couldn't rack the slide, or an older person with arthritis in their hands, well, all they have to do is just tip the little barrel up here and insert a cartridge. It's very simple. Now then, and you have a safety that only goes on on this particular gun. This is an older model when the gun is cocked, but this is a single action. Uh, one of the things I'd like to mention on the 22 rimfire little guns like this, in this case, I would recommend the 22 short model as a practice gun for maybe a 25 ACP because the rim fires in these little semi automatics are not going to be as reliable due to the ignition system as the center fire guns like the 25 automatic. So uh, this is typical Beretta. It's evident of quality machine work, uh, quality uh, materials throughout. It's a very nice little gun. Well, let's go ahead and put our magazine in it. And yes, we loaded it a moment ago. And we'll go ahead and cock our hammer. And so you can apply the safety once the hammer is cocked. But uh, if I were going to carry a round chamber with this little gun, I would probably carry it hammered down since you don't have any other grip safety or anything like that. And I think you'd probably be safe with it. Well, let's take a look on our target and see what it does. We'll shoot at the bottom little target there. And and we hit our empty empty chamber there. All right, let's go up and take a look and just see what the uh, see what kind of group it made there. Now friends, this is the group made and we're at about uh, 15 or so feet. Uh, the little 22 short, that's about a two inch group, so certainly uh, that's acceptable accuracy. You just have to remember, one, this would not be my first choice as a defensive gun, but that certainly uh, exhibits some degree of accuracy there. Now these little Berettas are some relatively inexpensive uh, uh, for what they are. Certainly anything Beretta makes is not going to be a second line. It's definitely a first line gun of its type. And of course your size does come into play. See, it's uh, easily goes in the palm of my hand, which I wear a size large glove, so uh, that gives you an idea of the size of the little gun. I would suggest uh, shooting solid point bullets in these uh, smaller guns like that because one, your uh, velocity out of this little gun on this 22 short is about 850 feet per second, so I think I'd be worried more about penetration on whatever I was shooting at than I would be on a bullet mushrooming or expanding. 
Uh, they are nice little guns, very nicely made, functional. Uh, remember though, you're always uh, possible for a malfunction on any rimfire semi-automatic uh, due to the fact that, that uh, the priming compound may not be uh, the same or you, it may have missed a spot when they were making the cartridge there in the rim and it may be you may hit a light spot of priming compound so sometimes they have to be struck more than once so again this would not be my first choice for defense but for what it is it's a very fine little gun now these little Berettas are some relatively inexpensive uh, uh, for what they are certainly anything Beretta makes is not going to be a second line it's definitely a first line gun of its type and of course your size does come into play see it's uh, easily goes in the palm of my hand which I wear a size large glove so uh, that gives you an idea of the size of the little gun I would suggest uh, shooting solid point bullets in these uh, smaller guns like that because one you're uh, velocity out of this little gun on this 22 short is about 850 feet per second so I think I'd be worried more about penetration on whatever I was shooting at than I would be on a bullet mushrooming or expanding. Uh, they are nice little guns, very nicely made, functional. Uh, remember though, you're always uh, possible for a malfunction on any rimfire semi-automatic uh, due to the fact that, that uh, the priming compound may not be uh, the same or you, it may have missed a spot when they were making the cartridge there in the rim and it may be you may hit a light spot of priming compounds so sometimes they have to be struck more than once so again this would not be my first choice for defense but for what it is it's a very fine little gun friends all of us as shooting enthusiasts should be subscribing to shotgun news the trading post for anything that shoots three big issues monthly with literally thousands and thousands of firearms bargains Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, the zip code 68902, their phone number, area 402-463-4589, MasterCard or Visa for subscriptions only. Now call them at 1-800-345-6923. Now then, friends, the next gun we're going to look at is the Advantage Arms uh, 422, 22 rimfire magnum so now this is different of course let's go ahead and unload it and you'll see we have in fact four holes now, I don't know what you call a little gun like this a derringer or just a four shooter I'm not sure but the way this functions and we have one of our ejectors here functional this one is not but I don't see where that makes a whole heck of a lot of difference uh, this is most interesting we have a rotary uh, firing pin here and what happens is each time you pull the trigger this firing pin on this cylinder type thing here will actually rotate to a different cartridge here in the barrels. Uh, again, this is the first one of these guns. I honestly don't know. I wouldn't slight this company for anything. I don't know if they're even still in business. I just flatly don't know. And if one of our viewers might drop me a line if you know anything about this company, well, please, uh, please let me know. But it's very nicely done. It's all steel. The grips are made of wood. It has a little safety here on the side, up to fire, down for safe. It is a double action only gun with an internal hammer or striker there. Has pretty good sights, actually. And uh, it has a hole here in the trigger. You could put a padlock or something through there, making the gun absolutely non-functional. But uh, to open the action, of course, just push down on the rear sight. The barrel's just, the whole front there just tilts forward. Interesting. So what we do, we have some 22 Magnum shells here. We just go ahead and load it. And yes, I will get them straight in a moment. Here we go. Two, three, and go for four here. Now, honestly, uh, in our testing, when this gun closes, now the firing pin, when it's in the on safe position, is locked. But the firing pin does rest up against the cartridge base there. And I'm not sure if I would carry this gun, if it were mine, with all four holes loaded. I might uh, put the firing pin over an empty chamber so you'd have a three shooter instead of a four. But for our purposes today, let's go ahead and we'll shoot all four of them. Be sure and check my hearing protection here because, yes, it's 22 Magnum is loud. Your velocity out of this little gun runs about 1,000 feet per second, so uh, uh, which is not earth-shaking, but I tell you what, it'd make whatever uh, uh, was hit with it pretty sick. We're going to shoot at that little block there at the top of the large circle. Let's just see where our point of aim is. Push it off safe, and let's see what it does. Here we go. 
Yes, they <laughs> severe noise, almost no recoil. Let's try it again. Two. And it has a, a hard trigger, but again, for a gun of this type, it's not too much to be concerned about. It's safety in its own right. Okay, now let's go up and take a look at our target. Friends, we had what looks like, of course, what, uh, what appears to be some keyholing of the bullets. But that's not too bad a group for a little gun of its type. I was shooting or aiming right here, and of course, here's where we hit. So uh, certainly more than accurate enough for its intended purpose, which is just beyond arm's length. And now then, friends, of course, we're going to put it back on safe, and then we'll open the action. Of course, we have some spent cartridges, empty cases here. And uh, we'll just pull them out there with my fingernails. Might take a little something extra since the uh, extractor or ejector here is not functional. I may have, but you see the little dent it makes in the center. And the firing pin rotates around that middle there. Uh, interesting concept from, how about Advantage Arms in St. Paul, Minnesota. I would like to know if these folks are still making guns because uh, uh, this little gun does have some merit. Now then, friends, let's take a look at the little Bryco or Jennings uh, 380 Model 48. Uh, you can tell this is nicely done. Uh, it has a very nice uh, finish on it. The grip is uh, some sort of hard plastic. And we see a safety on the side here. Now, this is your uh, striker. It doesn't have an external hammer, but it does have a cocking indicator. We'll cock it there, and you can see the little tip. And that is one may way that you could... Uh, realize that in fact the gun is cocked. You have a safety right here, down is to fire, up is for safe, and when the safety's on it locks the slide, it locks everything up about the gun. It does not have a magazine safety, it will fire if one's in the chamber with or without a magazine, but it has the uh, little place here on the front of the trigger guard for those folks that would want to grip possibly the frame like so. It was in vogue on some other combat guns years ago and may still be useful for all that matter. Uh, really, this is a nice package, especially you can see the finish is just excellent on the little gun. And I say little, it's not that little, sort of a mid-sized gun, let's call it that. Well, anyway, what we're going to do here, we're going to insert the magazine here in the base, like so. Be sure it's flush in, and uh, I believe that if I were going to carry that gun, I would carry it chamber empty, safety off. And, of course, to get the gun into action, all you have to do is... Retract that slide, and you know me, let it go so it can work properly. So we have our safety in place where nothing will happen. Well, let's go ahead and shoot there at a little X, and let's just see what it looks like. One, two. My friends, you can tell we have about a two and a half inch group, and of course I was shooting fairly rapidly. I wasn't uh, trying to take a real fine bead. But that's not terribly bad. That's roughly, I was aiming right here. So that's not terribly bad. Again, we're talking about a gun that's very inexpensive. And uh, apparently it's functional. Now the slide does not stay back on the last round, but uh, for a gun of its type, I might not have too big a problem with that. But uh, that's, that's not too bad, everything considered. Friends, honestly, uh, I'm impressed with this little Jennings gun because, uh, mostly because it has functioned. Of course, we hadn't shot it that much, but it has been reliable so far with oh, a couple of different kinds of ammunition. We did run some Remington hollow points. In fact, with Corbon 380 ammunition, 
uh, this would be a fairly serious defensive gun if it worked properly with them. And, and certainly with any semi-automatic, you have to take out the ammunition you plan to shoot in it and try it because you don't ever know about these things until you actually do try it. The 380 power-wise is a step below a 38 Special in most cases. And uh, although they certainly do have the uses, it was a very popular police caliber in Europe for many years, but uh, it does not have a tremendous amount of shocking power. And this is a case where with all three of the little guns we've seen uh, today so far, you have to be able to place your bullets uh, effectively for the guns to uh, be useful as defensive type firearms. Uh, this uh, certainly could be used in a defensive uh, scenario. Uh, also, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun shooting gun. Excellent plinker. Well, friends, this is a little different. Uh, of course, we always try and show you whatever we, we can or certainly whatever people want to know about. And these three guns uh, are, shall we say, three lesser expensive choices among defensive type guns that some people will actually use uh, for defense. And again, none of them uh, of the three would be my first choice, but hey, I tell you what, having any gun at all beats heck out of throwing rocks. So <laughs> uh, anyway, the little Beretta uh, 950 22 short, uh, the Advantage Arms and 22 Magnum uh, showed pretty good accuracy with some key holding, but again, at the ranges, it's uh, designed to be used that I'm not sure that would be too much of a consideration. And really the uh, 380 Brico here really does show some Brico Jennings, <laughs> whatever it is, or whatever we should call it, uh, really shows some potential as an accurate, uh, reasonably accurate, uh, gun uh, to be used in defense or plinking every how you'd like to use a semi-automatic. Uh, this, I have no idea what the durability, what the life of the gun may be, but uh, if you're going to use it in a defensive uh, mode there, well, uh, if you if you shoot a few rounds or a few hundred or whatever, it would be satisfactory for what it costs, as long as it could be depended upon. And back to the semi-automatic thing, that is something that, please, if you do have a semi-automatic, please go out and learn to shoot the gun. The first thing you should do is read your owner's manual. If you're not familiar with guns, certainly all the new guns that I'm aware of come with owner's manuals. And that was our first recommendation. And then if you do not have an owner's manual, try and find someone who knows something about these guns or go to your local stocking type gun dealer. Uh, go down to your gun shop and ask them just how these guns are supposed to function. And most of the people, certainly the ones we know, will be more than happy to help you out. You know, we have a lot of women now that are showing up uh, at the gun stores and not really knowing what they want. They, they know they need a handgun or a firearm and they're not really sure about it. Well, uh, as as I've said at least a dozen times on, on num uh, numerous shows, uh, if it's your first gun, go for a small revolver. But uh, if you do like semi-automatics or for one reason or another you want a semi-automatic, well, this would be one that would probably be worth taking a look at. You know, friends, it's rare in any field of manufacture that one particular company has a clear-cut advantage over the others. Well, in this case, it's Corbon Ammunition, Corbon Bullet Company, because they make the best handgun, long gun, and even some specialty caliber ammunition that's been real hard to get in the past. If you really want your handgun or rifle to perform at their absolute best, you need to find some Corbon Ammunition. For information on where you can get Corbon, information on their product line, call them. Corbon Bullet Company, 1-800-626-7266. Again, give them a call. It's a free call. 1-800-626-7266. Trust me on this one. Corbon is the best there is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce a couple of very fine people to you. On my left here is Mr. Bobby Christie. Uh, and on my right, of course, Al Evans. Mr. Al Evans, I'll, I'll certainly give you the honor, sir, of being Mr. Thanks, sir. Oh, wait, how about Colonel Al Evans, retired? Well, they, they call me the... Call you, call you Colonel sometimes. Right. And with, with good, good Colonel sometimes. Colonel sometimes. Yeah. Well, friends, these two fine gentlemen are our new advertising team, and they're doing a wonderful job for us. And certainly, we need your help with these advertisers. Please let them know because this program is very expensive to put on, and we need every advertising dollar that we possibly can get. And of course, uh, Al and Bobby are both shooters. Both of them are hunters. Uh, both of them have military backgrounds, uh, 
and have been active in the pro-gun movement for many years. And we're so proud. I say proud. We're so <laughs> we're so proud to have them aboard on this project because they are really doing a terrific job for us. And if you are a potential advertiser, all you have to do now, now they've come up with an 800 number just for ad sales now. 1-800-SAVE-YOU-GUN. Don't tell me what those numbers are, gentlemen. 728-8486 after an 800. Well, is there anything you'd like to mention to some of our potential sponsors out there, either one of you? Well, I'd like to just mention to them that we've got our ad rates are very good. They're very competitive. Uh, right now, um, nobody can advertise on national television for what we're advertising for. That's true. And besides that, we're on five days a week nationwide. That's right. And some of the cable companies actually run our show more than once during the week. Some, in fact, we're on somewhere in the country seven days a week. So, and also, I would like to mention welcome to the new cable company in Bellingham, Massachusetts. We're very pleased to be on in your area, and we hope you enjoy our program. Al, did you have something you want to add, sir? Well, on that subject, very soon we'll be on the Texarkana cable system. And... Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a step in the right direction. We're, we've got a lot of support from listeners out there, viewers out there, who are telling advertisers they ought to advertise on the program, and that, of course, helps. Darn right. So, friends, if you have an advertising spot you'd like to run on our show, or if, if you can contact someone who would like to advertise here on The Shooting Show, we really do appreciate and need all their support. You can call us at 1-800-SAVE-YOU-GUN. We're in the great. office, right. We're in the office five That's days great. a week from 9 to 5 o'clock. Well, Set great. standard time. So please let us hear from you out there. If you'd like to advertise on the shooting show, we have two terrific people for you to talk to, and they're pros at it, and they want to help you, certainly. Our friends, of course, we have our, our little 22 short and our 22 Magnum, our Advantage Arms, and we also have one of the great American Derringers. Now, there's not a huge amount of size differential in these three guns, but let's observe here on... The watermelon here and see what it looks like see if we've got a loaded gun yes we do on our watermelon with the 22 short let's see what happens here and we're empty well you can tell that it certainly split our watermelon let's try our advantage arms on the same melon the 22 magnum Okay, pretty good performance, actually. We find a total of 11 shots there. We pretty well disintegrated our melon. All right, let's take our, whoo, and let me check my hearing protection. Now then, let's take our American Derringer. And this one happens to be in 40 S&W. And let's see what happens with some Corbine ammunition. So, <laughs> we accomplished with one shot essentially what we accomplished with a whole bunch of them in the little guns. So, yes, there is a point uh, to having just two shots in one of these super American Derringers. Uh, that's just a small illustration there, but there's a lot of truth in it. Uh, give me a fewer shots with a lot of potency than a whole bunch of little bitty ones with uh, questioned effectiveness. Now, friends, we're looking at two of the finest small handguns that I'm aware of. These, of course, are from American Derringer Corporation. On your left, you have the Model 1, which is available in over 50 chamberings. 
and on the right is their double action derringer which is very similar to the old high standard design except it's been modernized this particular one is in the 38 special chambering now friends it's sometimes it's hard to have a large handgun with you but you can always have one of these american derringers call them 1-800-642-7817 hello friends i'm out here practicing for one of the most fun hunting sports that you can imagine You can use a variety of action types. You have access to uh, year-round hunting, some cases no limits, and you get to use a variety of guns. Well, you know what I'm talking about is a sport of varmint hunting. And we need to introduce you folks to varmint hunting. A lot of us have been doing it for years and didn't know what to call it. But we especially need to introduce you to the Varmint Hunter magazine. You know, friends, varmint hunting is one of the fastest growing shooting sports in the world. In fact, the Varmint Hunters Association, they have members in all 50 states and 19 foreign countries. Now, their magazine focuses on varmint hunting and super accurate reloading and shooting techniques. Plus, there's a lot of humor, a lot of interesting cartoons and humorous articles in the magazine. Uh, incidentally, the magazine is large. It's very high quality and something I think you're really going to enjoy reading, and it's published quarterly. It's only $24 for an associate membership in the Varmint Hunters Association. And look, for information, now you ought to do this. If you're a dedicated shooter, this is something I think you're really going to enjoy. For information on the Varmint Hunter magazine and the Varmint Hunters Association, call them at one 800 528-4868. Again, 1-800-528-4868. Be sure and tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Well, friends, we hope you're enjoying our program so far. Of course, the judge and I are here. We have some really important things to talk about. And you'll remember at the beginning of our program, I did mention how we really have had an effect. And again, I want to thank you, our viewing audience, because we're doing some good in calling these congressmen. Sir, I think you're going to update us on uh, some things about that, aren't you? Yeah. This is also a, a boost for our gun owners of America. Uh, I've gotten in the last week uh, six faxes from them, legal pages. One came in this morning. I like what it said. We're winning the war, but the battle is far from over. And it emphasizes how much difficulty Clinton is having with the crime bill. It is emphasizing how much uh, congressmen are being influenced, I won't say pressured, just influenced, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to not back the crime bill. Crime bill is bad legislation, as I told you all last week. Uh, I talked to Senator Graham uh, when he was speaking here, and uh, Phil Graham told me that uh, he was going to oppose a crime bill. He didn't know whether we had enough senators to successfully uh, filibuster the bill, but that the bill was bad to start with. It's over 500 pages long, or it was 500 pages long when I got a copy of it, and I'm sure that it's substantially more than that now because they've loaded it up with little, little bonus points for uh, to influence congressmen. You know, you give congressman a basketball court in his district, and you give another one a swimming pool in his district, or, or, or what have you. God only knows what Clinton has given away. Well, let me, let me interject here for a second. We've heard recently a couple of, of people say that a lot of congressmen don't even read these bills that they vote on. Is that, is that right, Judge? Well, Johnny, considering the volume of stuff that comes out of Congress, I would say it would be a miracle if they read all of the bills that came through. The crime bill, as I said, is over 500 pages long, and that was an early version of it when I got it. Uh, it is long enough so that it's tedious to sit down and try to read it. Uh, presumably, these people have staff members read it and then call to their attention things that uh, they consider to be important, but that's a lot different. If I were a senator, I would vote no on every bill that I had not read at least twice myself. And I think that's what all congressmen ought to do. It's what all senators ought to do. Well, now, friends, this is, what, this is such a, 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 
a terrible point that, that we even have to make this. We have people in Washington literally legislating our lives who don't even know what they're voting on. And I think that's outrageous. Well, Johnny, for example, I sit on the bench occasionally. When I do, and I, and I try a case and hear a case, uh, the attorneys write briefs. Now, it would be outrageous and scandalous if I decided a case without ever reading what the lawyers had to say about it or listening to their arguments. Now, none of these things are so complicated at least not in the court that I sit on, uh, are so complicated that it takes 500 pages for it. But when you start talking about a 500-page bill, and it reads like the Internal Revenue Code. One sentence says that uh, uh, the word so-and-so in such-and-such -such an act is amended to read the word so-and-so. Well, you've got to go back and read that other stuff to find out what they're doing. Well, don't you think this is part of what's wrong with our government today? We've got too much legislation literally too many regulations. Now friends, we are extremely pleased to be working with one of the finest magazines that you can find in the United States today, and it's called The New American. And the April 4 issue, which you see on your screen, covers issues like toward a police state, using a national epidemic of crime and violence as a justification, media pundits and collectivist politicians are aggressively campaigning to disarm private citizens and strengthen federal law enforcement powers. Yes, friends, this is our type of magazine, mostly because it's true. Now, these people at the New American Magazine are making a special offer available to the Shoot and Show audience for $22 for a six-month subscription, including the April 4 issue here, which deals with gun control and the things that go on with the politicians in Washington on how they're literally trying to disarm the United States population. Now, trust me on this one. If you're a gun owner, you need to get this issue of the New American. And friends, this uh, magazine comes twice a month. This is really a bargain. They cover all sorts of subjects, such as the Somalian quagmire, as you can see. And how about national service? If you really want the true picture of what this national service uh, is all about. How about the conservative index or the 103rd Congress? Subjects like terror in Haiti, the real Aristide. How about Bill Clinton and a question of character, which is most important to, to most of us, certainly, as conservative Americans. And here's a tremendous article on the New World Army. Now, friends, this is one of the finest publications that I think you could find in print anywhere today. It is really a bargain, $22 for six months of the New American magazine. And remember, this is 13 issues, including this powerful uh, gun control issue. And friends, I don't think you'll be disappointed. This, in fact, if you want to be informed about what's going on in the United States uh, and all sorts of issues that are so important to every last one of us who are really patriotic citizens, you need to start getting the New American. Now, to get it, you can call them at 1-800-727-TRUE, and those numbers are 8783, 1-800-727-8783, and be sure and tell them that you saw it here on the shooting show. It is such an important publication for our time, friends, and to really be informed, if you want to know the truth about what's going on in this country and around the world, again, you need the New American. 1-800-727-TRUE-8783, the New American. You know, Judge, I would venture to say that a lot of these congressmen are uh, actually don't have time to be congressmen because they're too busy going on special trips provided by some of their sponsors or people that, that uh, help put them in office. They're too, they're too busy playing to work. Now, you correct me if I'm wrong. Well, Johnny, even if they are working, uh, they're not necessarily working in Washington because congressmen come back to their home districts every weekend. Uh, Jim McCurry has been back here in this district uh, almost every weekend. I saw him on the, on the, uh, getting on the airplane Sunday, Sunday afternoon to go back to Washington. Well, now, of course, I think McCreary, we actually have a very decent, hard-working congressman here, and there are a good number of them out there, uh, certainly all, and I don't mean to put all the congressmen and senators down, but the problem is we really have some people who shouldn't be there, who really ought to be doing something else more useful, like pumping gas, cleaning windshields, doing something that would really be Well, important. Johnny, I got to tell you the story <laughs> that I heard today about a couple of liberals that were walking down the street together, and they came on a man that had just been mugged, and he'd been horribly beaten, and he was bleeding profusely. And one of them knelt down beside him and, and lifted his head and said, 
tell us, who did this to you? And the poor man was just kind of mumbled, and the, the liberal said again, you've got to tell us who did this to you because that man needs help. <laughs> now, <laughs> Well said, sir. It, it, it's a case that the liberals approach things differently from conservatives. We think, conservatives believe, that it's the individual that counts. Uh, and a person is either good or bad on it based on himself. Uh, liberals think that if a person is bad, that he has somehow or other, that government has somehow or other failed him. Uh, and therefore, government's got to, got to do something. It's got to, to get a program. And the trouble is, we've got too much government as it is. Um, really, our ancestors came over here to get away from government, to get away from regulations, to get away from a monarchy, and they distrusted government. Thank heavens for that. Well, absolutely. And we're headed toward... Uh, the people in Washington now, and certainly there are some people on local levels who literally want to control every aspect of our lives. And let me tell you what happened uh, uh, recently. Uh, a couple of days ago, someone had called us uh, who was involved in training a police agency, and it was not here, and, and certainly I would never give the name of, of the individual, but here's what happened. Friends, there are police agencies training right now around this country to come to your and my home and come in and and literally take our guns away now i don't know what legislation they've got planned but there are agencies now literally training to come to your door and knock on your door and say hey let us come inside and we want to check your firearms out well wait a minute wait a minute without probable cause whatever else and if you let them in your home once you consent to a search you've had it you've had it and of course the argument is well if you're not trying to hide something why do you object to it let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this audience, this is very important, and it's basic constitutional law. Our forefathers fought and died to make sure that government could not come knocking on the door and banging on the door and coming in and searching without having a good reason for it. And looking for guns is not a good reason. You've got to have what's known as probable cause. Now, Probable cause, uh, there are whole books written about what is probable cause, but simply stated, it's something more than mere suspicion and something less than that necessary to sustain a conviction. But the first thing that must occur before every arrest, before every search, is there must be probable cause. Unless, of course, you consent to the arrest or consent to the search. And your, your answer to them is, do you have a warrant? And they say, no, we don't have a warrant, then thank you very much. I appreciate you coming by. I hope you're successful in catching <laughs> criminals today. But don't come in my house. <laughs> but, but, but don't come in my house. That's right. And don't search my automobile. Uh, years ago, years ago, uh, I know of a case, I won't mention the name, uh, where a young man was, uh, uh, was stopped, and he had a bunch of Christmas presents in his car. And... If he had ever consented to the search of that automobile, they'd have opened every one of those Christmas presents, and this was on December 24th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the Christmas presents, incidentally, was going out to uh, Senator J. Bennett Johnston's uh, house. Well, be that as it may, this young man had great presence of mind. Uh, he was out of the car. He was coming back to the car. The police were suspicious that the car was parked where it was, which is not probable cause. They wanted to search a car, and he just threw the keys in the car and locked the door and slammed it. Uh, boy, that made them mad. It really made them aggravated. But there wasn't anything they could do about it. <clears throat> they arrested him. They handcuffed him. They even hit him and, and uh, had one of, his, one of his front teeth loose while he was handcuffed. Let me tell you something. I had a dentist out on Christmas Day looking at that, at that tooth. And I'm not kidding. I did. for you. Uh, as it worked out, uh, th there was nothing serious about it, except that it's always serious. When somebody gets arrested and taken down to the police station, fingerprinted, incidentally, I had those fingerprints and, and the arrest records all expunged also. But uh, why do you not want them in your house? Because it's, it's a constitutional freedom that you do not intend to, to surrender by reason of non-use or non-application. Absolutely.
Yeah. Now, wait, don't anyone think that we're anti-police because we're not. We have a lot of very fine police officers who watch this program. We have some who are members of our gun club. We're not anti-police. What we are against, though, is the abuse of power by government. Well, I'm plenty against the, the gun police uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, sure. to come around and knock on your door and say, let us search to see if there are any illegal weapons in there. And then when they get in, they take every weapon and say, well, we'll check it out. And if it's illegal, uh, then if it's not illegal, we'll bring it back to you. The thing is, there isn't such thing as an illegal weapon. There, there could be illegal possession of certain types of weapons. Well, I take that back. There's one weapon that's actually illegal. If this gun, for example, had had the serial numbers completely obliterated, on it. You can use a mm -hmm. punch and just punch those numbers out where you can't find the serial number. That is an illegal weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, I don't know of any weapon that is actually illegal that is any hand-carried weapon. Mm -hmm. Now, bazookas and uh, uh, hand grenades or, or, uh, or things like that, maybe a flamethrower. Uh, I've always thought I'd like to have a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> incidentally, we, uh, uh, there is going to be a gun rights rally in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln Memorial on August 14. Now, if somebody goes, we're not going to be able to make it uh, there for that. If someone does go uh, and you take your video camera, well, please send us some, some videotape footage if you do go. We hope there's good attendance. Uh, believe me, if there's not good attendance, the organized media is going to uh, play it up as much as possible. Uh, uh, talking about how the gun owners are, or whatever they're going to say about us, it won't be good. It's trust just me. a small group, and of course, uh, down in Baton Rouge, when they had a, a, a gun control rally, and about eight members of Sarah Brady's group showed up, they, there was no publicity on that at no, all. They, no, they don't give the other side publicity. If they have a rally that's a bust, well, you don't hear anything at all about it. But if we have a rally that's not uh, tremendously successful, you can bet. And the problem with getting gun owners, see, we're working people. We actually have jobs, and we work for a living. We do things that are important to this country. So it's hard for a lot of gun owners to take off time, take a week, in fact, and go down to Washington, D.C., and the expense of travel and things like that because we actually are out here working. So, But let, we do hope it goes well. well. Let me give these telephone numbers okay. again. Congressman, Please. Congressman's phone number. Now, remember, everything in Washington's area code 202 for Congress, the Congressional Switchboard, and they can connect you with your congressman, is 225-3121. The Senate Switchboard is, what was it, Johnny, 224-3121. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It was the same four digits and, the, uh, and one less on the third digit. Uh, the Congressman uh, Dingell, let's talk about Congressman Dingell for a minute. He's from Michigan. He's an NRA board member. You'd think that we could count on him uh, for an, uh, an anti-crime bill vote because of the gun ban. You'd think so. Uh, he has been saying that he would, uh, uh, he would vote for the crime bill, even if it had a gun ban in it. And he has been inundated with telephone calls, particularly from NRA members. And his, his office is reported to have been quite rude to people. They find out they're not in his district, and they say, we're not interested in talking to you. Hang up. Well, uh, you might let Congressman Dingell know, if you're an NRA member, that you vote. And you can vote him off of that board of directors, which I'm sure he's quite proud of. Or if he's not quite proud of it, then he ought not be there in the first place. Uh, his telephone number, area code 202, 225-4071. Be prepared to face a hostile uh, 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 who the rest of the phone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> staff member. That's a word. I but want. you know, <clears throat> I think that uh, these people need to hear from us, friends, and we need to just tell them just how we feel. And uh, I, I think that uh, this man is a nice, deserving person to know how we feel. So anyway, we want to remind you: please join the Shooting Show Gun Club if you at all possibly can. We still have the offer on uh, with Gun Owners of America with an extra ten dollars. Our $25 annual membership fee for our Shoot and Show Gun Club, another $10 will also uh, get you in the Gun Owners of America organization, which is a wonderful organization. If you're a real activist and you ask Gun Owners of America, particularly Larry Pratt, to put you on his fax uh, distribution line and you have a fax machine, uh, you'll get these same faxes that I get. Now, this is, this is better than newspapers. It's better than Gun Week because Gun Week's always a week behind. This uh, and, and this is daily. Out. This uh -huh. is right up to the day. Uh, we've had some uh, a little luck with uh, 
uh, with our Christmas fund, but we really need to do it now. Uh, or send your money to the Gun Owners of America because they, they know where it needs to go. Uh, they're, they're a good bunch of people. Uh, NRA is out on a fundraising solicitation, but I'm really discouraged at the NRA's bureaucracy. Uh, I told you I had six facts in, in six days from Gun Owners of America. I've gotten one from the NRA. Well, it's just good to know that there is an organization literally on site in Washington, D.C., who are uh, who is reporting uh, the, the correct information, who is active, and that's one thing I want to say about Larry Pratt. He's probably, and to quote you, the best gun rights debate uh, person that we have in the, in the whole country right now as far as debating some of these people on Capitol Hill. Wouldn't, I'm quoting you correctly, right? Yeah. Another one that's excellent is the uh, uh, head of, of uh, Congress of Racial Equality. That is uh, Roy Ennis. Roy Ennis. Roy Ennis is top notch on this. He sees what this good disarmament thing is. It's an attempt to disarm, as he puts it, disarm his people, minorities. Uh, I don't know that that's true. I think it's an attempt to disarm everybody. everybody. Absolutely. But uh, I'm, I, I'm glad he's paranoid like I am and, and will at least support the right to keep and bear arms. The, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just too important. It's entirely too important. Johnny, we've had some requests from some of our uh, correspondents to mention their name on the air or to let them know various things. Did you bring in those letters? letters uh, I don't have them handy tonight. We will do that on next week's program. We sincerely appreciate everyone's. We've got, we've got a lot of letters in the mail. Uh, some of them are long and handwritten, and yes, we try and take the time between the two of us. We do uh, try attempt to read all the mail. We really appreciate all your correspondence. Well, we've got a big job ahead of us, friends. We cannot let up now. So we're going to go on with the rest of our program. We really appreciate everyone being with us. Please join the Shoot and Show Gun Club as, as soon as you can. Well, friends, you'll recognize this lovely lady here, Donna, who uh, helps us on the project uh, just every time we can get her down there, in fact, because she's always a, an inspiration to be around. But Donna, tell me something. Uh, what are you reading there? What kind of book? What is that? Well, this is the best uh, book I've ever read, but it's also the best holster I've ever seen. Well, and of course, Donna's opened the book, and, and this is uh, an American Derringer. In fact, Donna, you carry a pretty big gun there. That's a 44 Special. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, that's, uh, I would say, the best book to have in a dangerous situation that I can imagine. This is such a neat thing, friends. Now, American Derringer is selling this book. Now, the gun's not included. But this book, which looks like a regular uh, novel or library book, along with this very high-quality leather holster, you get both of these for a limited time for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling. And I think, you know, someone like Donna, I know you don't carry a purse all the time, and, and I think you have a licensed uh, concealed carry permit. Well, when you're walking downtown, all Donna has to do is take her book along with her, you know. And here, unfortunately, is like a lot of other places in the country, we do have some high crime districts that hardly you can avoid sometimes, certainly if you work downtown. And this is really a tremendous idea. Now remember, uh, this would uh, qualify as a concealed, you need a concealed carry permit in some areas for this, but that's fine. This is one of the best holsters, uh, we call it that, or hide books that, that I can imagine. Now American Derringer does have a good number of the books in stock, they have a limited number of holsters, but this is something, friends, 1995 for the book and for the holster. Tremendous idea. Certainly, you could keep one in your home, keep it on a shelf if you need to store valuables in it of some kind. Well, in fact, you like it pretty well, don't you, Don? Yeah, I mean, I keep it on my nightstand, and then I've got my gun right beside me in case I have an intruder. You never know. Hey, well, that's really true. You never know. And, of course, that 44 Special American Derringer could deal just about anything, any problem that you or, in fact, I or anybody else might have to deal with up close and personal. So, in fact, here's how to get uh, to order the book and the little holster here. Friends, this is really a terrific bargain from American Derringer. The uh, hide a book there, the book with a the compartment there, and the also very nice leather holster. Call them, 1-800-642-7817. Again, 1-800-642-7817, $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling. $22.95 gets both of them for a limited time. Friends, you can communicate with the shooting show on CompuServe now. Our number is 7354230243024. Again, 7354230243024. And to join our shooting show gun club, 
Call us at 1-800-895-7916. We take Visa, MasterCard, check money, order, whatever you got. Join today, friends. We need to reach as many people as we can. Well, Donna, let me tell you something exciting. You know, next month, the Soldier Fortune Convention is coming up in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, in fact. Now, you know me. I'm, I'm not a gambler. I mean, you know, I just, I'm sorry. I, my, my little money comes so hard. That <laughs> I'm not, but a lot of people are. But the at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, September 14 through 18, is the Soldier of Fortune Convention. Now, we've gotten some quite a few very fine tapes in. We're going to have our shooting show lady going to give that trip away out to Las Vegas for two uh, to be with us there at the Sands Hotel. We're going to have a booth at the convention. And let me mention now, uh, for information, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but to pre-register for the convention, you have a little bit of time left until August 31. Uh, it's $135. It's uh, $160 after August 31, but let me tell you what you get. You get uh, to attend all the seminars, and they do have quite a number for all sorts of things. Uh, topics ranging from combat weapon usage to military situation reviews, uh, police tactics, survival in modern times, and that's a heck of a good one right there. Uh, the Expo has over 400 e exhibitors, and I'm proud to say the shooting show is going to be one of them. Yes, we will be there on the floor. Uh, the three-gun match is going to be there. The uh, firepower demonstration, which is really something to behold, especially the Mad Minute. Now, those of you saw it on the show last year, uh, about 30 or so machine guns all shooting at one time. It's, of course, it's very safe. They have great safety precautions, but it's really something to see. And certainly the banquet Saturday night, the awards ceremony, uh, which is, is really terrific. Now, friends, trust me on this one. If you don't go to another convention this year, trust me, the Soldier of Fortune Convention is it. And, friends, that Soldier of Fortune Convention information number is 1-800-800-7630. Again, 1-800-800-7630. Well, friends, it's happened again. We've run out of time for today's program. From Kurt, the judge, myself, we want to thank everyone for being with us for today's program, and we look forward to seeing you on the next shooting show.